You talked with a number of people in the film about the sea level rising and how it seems to be worse in that area. Have you found out anything more about how fast the change is happening since you completed the film? You know, no scientist will give me uh, their guess because it's, uh, it's just a guess. Um, so I don't know how long, and no one really knows, um, there's so many variables, how long it'll be before they're actually underwater. But more importantly, what's happening now is the sea level is infiltrating their crops. So all their crops are dying. And so there's a man that says, you know, we may starve before we drown. And it's because uh, even though they still have land, the sea has infiltrated their crops and they, they rely on that fresh water. Um, all their water is collected rainwater that lies in this coral basin, basically under their land. So once the seawater gets in there, it's not fresh water anymore and they're in, in real trouble. But, um, you know, I don't know, as far as a timetable, I mean, it could be two years, it could be 20 years. But with the way that the Arctic shelves, the ice sheets are melting, the glaciers are melting, I mean, that's all going there into the oceans. And because of the rotation of the Earth, the Pacific Ocean travels a long way, and then it closes out when it gets to Asia. So I think that's what's happening with there, why they're experiencing such a high level of sea rise there, um, is because the ocean is just, uh, the gravity's pushing it there and it has to stop, so it just builds up. You went to Bat for Islanders by looking for space on other islands. Will you tell us what the current status is on Yap? Yeah, we actually found some land for them to move to, and the Yapis people have just been incredible. They are the heroes of this story. Um, they watched the footage of the islanders and they were completely touched by it. They said, you know, of course we'll take these people. You know, in fact, their politicians were saying it would be embarrassing not to take these people. So that was a year ago when I shot that. So I left and I really didn't know if this was, they were saying it for the cameras like our politicians do, or if they meant it. Well, I just got word two weeks ago that they've finished the first part of the feasibility study. So they have not missed a step. They're, they're planning on all these people moving there and they're working to do it. I mean, it's just, it's absolutely amazing. They're amazing people in that whole area. That's why my heart is, is there in the Pacific. Initially, I planned on sailing around the world. I'm just gonna sail around the Pacific. They're beautiful people. Oh. <laughs> right. And the final minutes of your film reveal the meaning of the title. Please tell us about that and what progress you've been able to make as a result of screen screening the fil film here at the film at the festival. Yes, the um, uh, the search in two chiefs. Actually, uh, Rapwi and one of the chiefs came up with uh, some place with a mountain. And Rapwi started it by saying, you know, we have no mountain. We have no place to go. We have no mountain. And then another chief later says, we need some place to go. We need some place with a mountain. So that's where the title comes from. Um, you know, we've been searching for an island that they could move to and, and save their culture. and. It looks like we found one, but it's very small, so we wouldn't be able to put all of them there. But the goal is to save this culture, so we're going to try and move one village, sail with them 4,000 miles in their canoes to, uh, to this new island and start a new village. And hopefully they won't become westernized. We're all westernized. We don't need more westernization. There's this one seed. So the closing is, you know, uh, someplace <clears throat> where we can plant a seed, a seed of an ancient culture on a tropical island. So. And what can kids my age do to help? You know what, you can write to President Obama and say, hey, let's help these people. You know, you can talk to your parents, you know, about uh, maybe they know someone that knows someone that can help these people. And really what we need to do and what your generation needs to do is we need to quit burning fossil fuels. It's the most important thing there is. And alternative energy is great, but it's our consumption. We need to cut back on our consumption. 
We need you need to unplug your phone chargers at night. You need to not just turn your computer off, but you need to pull the plug out of the wall because even though your computer's off, you're still using energy there. You need to think about things like Christmas lights and decorations on the outside of your homes. You need to think about walking to the store instead of driving to the store. And uh, I mean, conservation is where it's at. We have to get away from this because we use, we waste so much energy and it's so important. This energy comes at a cost and we're putting this pollution that generates this energy, we're putting this pollution in the air on our planet. It's floating over there and it's affecting these beautiful people thousands of miles away and they don't use any fossil fuels there. You know, they're losing their islands because of us and it's going to take your generation, my generation has blown it. We've missed the boat. We blew it. And it's up to you guys to save this thing. You have to pull something out and do this because we've blown it. We're not doing anything about it still. So anyway, we're counting on you. And please, you know, do it and make your parents do it. So it's hard. It's not easy, but we got to do it. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, nice to meet you. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs>